Recently, I went on a trip to Yosemite and I was looking for some ultra lightweight tripods and I came across the Surui T025X and it's ultra lightweight. It was perfect for bringing it on the trip. So I purchased this tripod. I also purchased the T024X because it was just so similar. This one's a five section tripod and this one's a four section tripod. So I wanted to review them. There's companies saying that their uh, three and a half pound tripods are lightweight, but these two pounds tripods, it's just no comparison. These are so lightweight. I mean, you can carry two of these, no problem. And when I do time lapses, I'm usually carrying three cameras, maybe three tripods, and this makes it just so much easier. So both tripods can um, fold up quite compactly. The 25X is just so tiny, so cute. The 24X, a little bit longer. You might have a hard time to fit this into a normal backpack, but it's no problem if you have um, a camera backpack that you can hook a tripod to. Both tripods come with um, some cheap carrying cases. Not that I'm ever gonna use them. They also come with the necessary hex keys for adjusting the leg tension. The 24X comes with a removable center column. So this one's the long center column and then it comes with a short center column. The short center column is so that you can um, put the tripod really low to the ground. And with the 25X, the center column is permanently extended and I don't really like that, but it is optional to actually unscrew the center column and it comes right off. And the reason I don't like the center column always extended is because it really reduces the stability and I don't really need the extra height because I usually shoot low to the ground when I'm uh, doing landscape photography. So it just unscrews just like that. The ball head unscrews off. And one other thing I noticed is that there's actually a plastic part that the ball head screws onto. What I would do is actually take off this plastic part and screw it directly onto the, um, the metal. So it goes from metal to metal contact on the ball head. So the ball head mechanism is pretty nice. It's actually adjustable. One side is a 3 8 inch screw, the other side is quarter inch. So in case you have a quarter inch ball head or 3 8 inch ball head, both will work. And the ball head that it comes with is the C10S and it's a 3 8 inch ball head. And speaking of this ball head, it's actually pretty nice. It comes with a, the cutest little quick release plate. It's Arca Swiss compatible. There's also a locking pin that's pretty nice if you, in case uh, this actually unloosens, your camera won't fall off the ball head. And this is pr a pretty nice ball head, I gotta say. This is probably the best um, value ultra lightweight ball head. The panning tension is pretty smooth and the ball head tension is also pretty smooth and it, the tension is adjustable so you can tighten it make more fine tuned adjustments or just loosen it just to have it pretty loose. So what I like about these tripods is that the legs are quite smooth and also the leg twist locks, they just require a small twist and they all come out. And it's pretty fast to set up the tripod. With the 24X, you're gonna get a little bit of extra um, height with the center column both fully extended. It's a lot more stable than the 25X because the 25X, um, two sections on the center column is really not stable. One section, more stable. I mean, a couple of ways to increase the stability. Just don't use these at the fully extended height. Avoid using the last leg section, especially on the 25X. You don't want to use the center column. Uh, remove it, save some weight on the 25X. With the center column removed, you do lose the ability to reverse fold the 25X. 
but it's still pretty compact. With the 24X, just don't have the center column extended all the way. Uh, this one's a little bit more stable, so it'll be fine using it fully extended. And then the best thing is just to have the leg angles on a shorter or more angled. So the second angle makes it a whole lot more stable. Maybe have the only two sections extended and that'll be really stable, even in pretty strong wind. The build quality of these tripods are quite good. It's pretty much all carbon fiber and metal. The twist locks are metal, the base is metal, the ball head is metal, and the leg bottoms are rubber with a metal cap underneath that. So it's not just rubber and then carbon fiber. So they do have the foam um, pads on the legs, but I don't know why they only put two on the legs. They should have put three. It doesn't really make a difference in weight and it would be nicer for the cold environments. The leg angle adjustments on these legs are pretty nice as well. There's just a little tab that you have to push in and then you can change the leg. So it's just spring loaded and there you can change it to three different angles. But one thing I really don't like about these tripods is how narrow the default leg angle is. So if you're planning to use these for time lapses, you really want to put a weight on the center column or use them with the second um, angle so it's a lot more stable. My Faisal tripod, which is pretty, pretty narrow, I think, myself. I thought it was narrow when I first got it. Well, the Faiso is wider. And of course my slick tripod, I think it has the perfect angle. It's a lot wider. That's really disappointing. Suri so should have made the default leg angle just a little bit wider. And I don't really care about sacrificing a couple of inches just for better stability. The tripods work pretty well with the range of cameras. Works fine with my little A6000 and Rokinon 12 millimeter and Works fine with my 7200. So they can carry a pretty decent amount of weight. The ball heads are pretty stable. The tripods are also pretty stable, but um, they do wobble a little bit, but it's not really a problem. The legs are a little bit flexible. It's only gonna be a problem if you have it fully extended in some pretty windy conditions. But with the default leg angle, uh, what this camera actually did um, fall down during a time lapse. So the wind just whoosh, knocked it down. So that's pretty disappointing and that's why the, ang the default leg angle is a deal breaker for me. They've held up quite well in a range of conditions. Uh, this one, I took it to Yosemite. I put it in snow, I put it all over. I also took these to Mauna Kea. I also took these out to the lava flow and they didn't melt when they're close to the lava. These tripods are an amazing value. You're getting an ultra lightweight tripod in a compact package. These are great for travel, great for pretty much any use, except you'd want to be using your telephoto lenses extensively on this or, um, and these aren't like super stable, so you're not gonna want to use these in some strong wind. But for everything else, these are pretty good. And if you want to get uh, save as much weight as possible, get the 25X. If you want a little bit more height, more stability, get the 24X. They're both the same price, and I think they're both great values. Thanks for watching this video, and if you've enjoyed it, please give it a like, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And if you're interested in purchasing these tripods, please use the link in the description, because that'll really help me out. I'm liking how this fog looks, so I'm gonna to try to capture this plant over here. I'm gonna get the tripod really down low to get close up. I'm gonna use a large aperture to get try to get a nice blur on this. I'm gonna see how that looks. F2.8, let's see. Of course it had to start raining, but I'm not gonna uh, get out of here until I get a shot of Hali Ma'u Ma'u 
glowing. I'm gonna use my 7200 and A6000. See what I get. I'm just gonna use the T025X at a low angle and it's perfectly stable enough to get the shot. Really liking how the, the lava is illuminating the fog above it and also the plume. And it's like the perfect time right now, the good time after sunset. It has that nice blue in the ambient sky. So I switched places so I can get a wide view without any uh, blockage from the trees. I'm going to use my A6000 and Rokinon 12mm. So I'm going to try f2.8 6 seconds ISO 100. See how that looks. <laughs> 